Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we are building a new HO scale kit. It's called Mulholland Metalworks. I'll put an image up on the screen for you. All right, well, this is going to be a fun build, so let's get to it. Don't forget all Patreon members receive a discount on this kit and the discount code can be found on my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jason Jensen trains. All right, let's start building this. Okay, so here are all the parts that come in the kit, minus all the detail parts. Um, we'll get to that later. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is focus on these two sheets right here. We're gonna cut out all these parts and start to assemble the uh, garage part of the structure. Okay, now that we have all the parts cut out, take a small file and file any little nubs that are on there. Real quick, and I'll just show you. Every once in a while, you'll see a little white area from cutting it out of the sprue and it sticks up a little bit. So, you just want to file that flat, even inside the windows. Now, if you have a round file, you may want to file the inside of these curves. Take your time. Um, you don't want to bend these or break them. This isn't really necessary. They're pretty smooth, but if you want to just go over them quick with a round file, you can. Okay, now we'll start to assemble our walls. Okay, we'll start with this wall right here. And then let's see which one fits. Yeah, that goes right there. And you'll see this one is the opposite so it has to go on this side okay so we'll use our one two three block to make sure it's nice and square I'll put a link in the description um, so that you can get these and I'm just using full strength Elmer's glue okay we'll just set that to the side and We'll glue this one. Now this one, you have to imagine it goes back here and that goes there. So we're gonna glue this corner right here. Okay, I just put glue on each end and now we're gonna glue these together. I'm just double checking to make sure it's square on my grid and it is okay we'll let that dry for a little bit and then we'll start to add all of the uh, detail that goes on it now you could spray all these parts with a gray primer first but i feel like the glue sort of welds the pieces together better if they're not painted so after we get everything glued on there then we'll completely spray this with a gray primer. Okay, so we want to glue these on next and they go on the end. Now when you put glue on these, you may want to take a, a paintbrush if you want and smear the glue or just take your finger. But you want that glue to be evenly spread. You want the piece completely covered. And again, try to get it even. And you'll see that it's flush on the end. Both sides. There's no overhang. Okay, now we'll do the same to the other end. Okay, the other end is done. And again, important that they're completely flush with the side. 
So just double check and as it dries, just move those all the way out to the edge. And I say that because the next piece is this. And you don't want there to be a gap in that corner. You can always fill that gap if there is a little gap, but if you put these all the way to the edge, it should be great. Okay, let's glue this one and put it on. Now, if you want to, take your glue and then lightly take your finger or a paintbrush. That way it fills in the crack if there is a little crack, like you'll see here. Okay, the gray primer is all done. Now, the corners aren't perfect, but at least there's not a big gap in there. Okay, now we're going to take burnt sienna. And we're going to start to sponge color on this. I'm going to do less at the bottom like the paint is chipping off. Now we're going to have to take a brush and get into the corners. If you have an old paintbrush, um, that might work better. If it's all kind of frayed at the end, it's going to create um, better texture. Now don't worry if you feel like you're getting too much paint on there because you can always go back in. Uh, we're going to take a gray, slate gray, and we'll do some sponging on the edges to make, like, make it look like it's chipped off on the edges and corners. Now there's a wood structure that gets put right in front right here. But this area right here is a good area to practice. Don't forget to rotate your sponge or rotate the building so you don't get a pattern on it. All right, we'll just keep working our way around. And then once we reach the end here, we can look at the sides and see if we want to add more here and there. If there's area where you feel like maybe there's too much gray showing through. Just go ahead and dab some paint there. Okay, next we're going to take slate gray and we're going to dry brush. So first, let's hit the corners. It doesn't have to be solid. Now, if you want to, you can take a clean sponge, dip it in your slate gray. As you can see, I'm just focusing um, on the lower half. I'm doing some dry brushing with earth brown, just lightly. It just gives the illusion that the uh, with rain and over time the uh, color of the structure ran down over that concrete and just kind of stained it. And remember, there's a wood structure that gets put 
on the front here so that all gets covered up okay next we're going to take this sheet right here and we're going to cut out these two signs so that we can spray the rest of this with a color be careful not to cut any of the other parts okay so we're just removing these now this gets sprayed with a teal color and I'll show you the can okay next we're going to paint this green or do a, a wash of green over it and we're using Hauser medium green okay I painted a darker green over the top of these just on the top part because this gets put over the top of it like that okay they're both glued together now we're going to add some rust and we're going to start with antique gold Now we'll switch to bittersweet chocolate. I'm tearing it to make it smaller. Okay, we'll let that dry. And then I want to do some streaks of burnt sienna. Let's put nail holes on our uh, walls, our wood walls. So first, let's mark where we want them. Now we'll take our pounce wheel. I'll put a link in the description below the video where you can get these. I bought mine in a three pack. So basically you get N scale, H O scale and O scale. Helps if you line it up on your grid and then keep your ruler straight with the lines this way. Okay, we've got our walls cut out. Now let's add bracing. Okay, so on the small wall with the window in the center, I put the bracing on both sides all the way to the edge. On this wall, the tallest side, not the short side, the tallest side, all the way to the edge. Same on this one. We're going to put it right down here all the way to the edge now on the other side <clears throat> we're going to put it an eighth in from the edge so i just use one as a guide and okay we'll do the same on this one now we have a piece left over so let's put that right next to the door, in between the door and the window. I'm going to cut some lines in these before I stain it to make it look like some of the boards have been replaced. Okay, now we can stain it 
and I'm using Murky Brown from Best. The website is right there. Oh, almost forgot our corner trim. Okay, next I'm going to take some thin tape and mask off some of these boards. I think I got this tape at Hobby Lobby. It's perfect because it's the same thickness as the boards. Okay, now we're going to use light buttermilk. And first, we're going to do a combination of sponge and brush. So I'm using the sponge on pretty much the lower half of the wall. Now we'll take a small brush and do individual boards. And it will definitely go heavier at the top. We forgot to paint our, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to spray it with the teal and then brush the uh, Hauser medium green over it so that it matches uh, the doors and windows. Okay, now let's glue on our window frames and our door frame. Now we'll take the Hauser medium green and paint the inside of the window frames and the door frame just so that bare wood's not showing. Did some light dry brushing with a light green called aloe. just over the window frames and door frame. Okay, now let's paint our trim and add our trim. Um, we need Hauser medium green. We'll brush that over it and then after we get it glued on, we can hit the edges of it with the aloe. Okay, so we're doing some light dry brushing on our trim. Um, you only have to put trim on this piece right here, on both ends. So we're going over the edges and then a little heavier towards the bottom. Now we'll go ahead and get our doors and windows glued in. Okay, we've got our walls glued together. We've got our door put in. I haven't put the windows in yet because I'm going to have those open. I did put this one in. And let's paint a window shade on that door. Let's take desert sand. Now let's glue this to the structure. I'm going to use super glue. Make sure you're on a flat surface. Make sure it's square. Now after I sprayed the teal color, I took the Hauser medium green and went around the edge and painted the edges of the cardboard. So that'll get glued on like that. And then same with this one. 
I'm going to put the uh, black paper on mine before I glue them in place. Okay, we have our black construction paper. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace this one because this will be a solid piece. And then we'll draw lines and then put tar um, in between or on those lines. Be very careful that you don't cut into the cardboard. You should probably draw it on there first with a pencil, then use a ruler and cut it. Now, if you have a spray adhesive, that would probably be the best. Just spray this and then put that on there. I don't have any right now, so... Make sure you get all the edges. Have it go all the way to the edge. If you have a little bit of overhang, um, it's okay, or you can just trim it. I'm going to quick trim mine. Okay, we'll let this dry. Um, let's see. Let's put our weights on it, our one, two, three blocks. Okay, while that's drying, let's put um, tar paper on this. Sometimes I already have some cut, but I don't. I've ran out. I have one piece. I'll use this as a patch because you'll see I sprayed it with a gray. I just used the gray primer. We'll use that as a guide for how thick they are. This piece is almost a half inch, a little under. Now we'll take some sandpaper. Let's get this roof card glued in place. Once it's on, we can do some dry brushing over it. Okay, let's draw our lines on here. Now let's do some dry brushing. Okay, we'll use slate gray and let's mix a little bit of neutral gray in with it. Okay, next we're going to take a black sharpie and we're going to go over these lines. And the trick is to not use a ruler. You don't want them to be nice and clean and straight. Now once we get it glued on there, then we can take some pigments and dirty it up a little bit. Try to get it as flat as you can before you put glue on it. I was wondering about a support piece in the center. You can add strip wood if you wanted to. You could put two, two beams going across. Now quick before that dries, I'm going to add a little bit of super glue. Four corners in the middle. Now you may want to do this upside down so you can see the overhang. If there's any glue seeping out, we'll clean it up. Now I glued acetate on the back of our windows and let's get those glued in place. And I'm going to glue them. Um, open in an open position Now 
I just glued the uh, vent onto a black piece of construction paper and then rusted the edges. Now I'm just going to glue that onto the front here. You could just paint a square behind it black if you wanted to. Make sure you put your glue all the way to the edge, all around it, um, so that it doesn't curl and lift up. Okay, next we're going to add some weathering, and we're using pigments from Ammo. One is called City Dark Dust and Winter Soil. First, I'm going to lay down a paper towel. We'll start with the lighter one, which is City Dark Dust. And... We'll start on the wood structure. Okay, now we'll, we'll move on to the darker one, which is, which is winter soil. soil. Okay, I went ahead and painted all of the detail parts and glued them on and let me go over it quick with you. Everything that you see is included in the kit. You can see there's a vent right here. Two roof vents and a smokestack. Give you a better look at the smokestack. So I actually just sprayed that with a reddish brown primer. And then took joint compound spackling. And smeared it on there. And then of course paint the concrete cap on it and the two pipes okay the only thing left is the rooftop sign okay we'll spray a gray primer on these pieces and we'll spray a gray primer on these okay after our gray primer was dry i uh, started painting parts um the sign that has the letters cut out that gets black the solid sign gets white. And now let's glue these together. So what's the best way to do this? Um, take this piece and we're going to lay it down with the V like this. Okay. Then we may have to file some of these. So you have this shape. This part here that slants back, that gets glued to each one of the posts on there. And just line up the top. Um, let me glue these and then I'll show you. I should have filed these before I painted them, but that's okay. We'll just quick make sure they're smooth. So it's a good gluing surface. So this is actually the back of it. So that sign gets glued onto this side. Okay, I just sponged on some rust, just dark brown. And then I glued the sign together. Also, I did some sponging on both sides with the dark brown now we'll glue this on
Okay, the sign is on. And I put the little meter on the side. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to purchase this kit, please visit my website at jasonjensentrains.com. Now, all of my Patreon members received early access to this kit, and they also receive a discount on the kit. If you'd like to become a Patreon member, please visit patreon.com forward slash Jason Jensen trains and uh, I'll put it right here on the screen for you all right well thank you all so much for watching and like always a huge huge thank you to all of my patreon members this channel is not possible without the help of all of these people <laughs> I love all of these people so much uh so incredible the support that they show all right well until next time stay motivated and happy modeling everyone <laughs>